I actually got not obsessively so I'm not as terribly informed as I probably should be but I got pretty into the idea of well I got I got really interested in North Korea for a little while and mm. I listened to an audiobook about it and um so you know I'm serious Welcome to Royal Path, where I ask the hard questions. Do you guys like Law and Order, the TV show? The doink, 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 doink. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah. That would be the one. That would be the is one. Like, is that the one where, like, uh, Ice-T was on? Yeah. <laughs> That's the SVU, right? Yeah. Law and Order SVU? <laughs> yeah. He was like, man, he had some lines on that show. <laughs> he was yeah, yeah, no lines. Yeah, like, <laughs> just walk up and be like, he's a sexual predator. That's what they do. And it was like, <laughs> okay, all right. And like in that iced tea voice. And like, uh, yeah. My wife and I were just talking about Law and Order the other day. And I was like, I don't know how you guys feel about it. I was like, man, that is a really good show. Like, the writing was really solid. Not SV, I mean, SVU's cool but like hey hold on hold on hold on but wasn't it just taken from actual cases wasn't that the whole thing about law and order came that's what it later became earlier on man like watch like late 80s early 90s law and order like maybe up to like the middle like uh what's that guy's name he's a french actor um gerard depardieu is that (laughs) No? no, no, okay. I was like, Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Absolutely, he was not on Law and Order. I promise you that. Are you sure? Have you uh, yeah, I, I promise you. <laughs> he's like a big. He's like their the big movie actor from out of like. Uh, he's like the Sean Connery of. Of, of France, <laughs> the guy that's in um, the professional. No, that's uh, um. Oh, what is that actor's name? But that is a great. Wasn't he? Wasn't he in the Brotherhood of the Wolf? Same guy, right? No, or Ger- or Gerard Depardieu. Depardieu. Was that was that a werewolf movie? Yeah, but, was not it? Like, but but like not like you think it is. It's trying to be serious. It was like a, I think I think yes, I think he I was. Think he was in that. Yeah, I think he was. Interestingly enough, so is Ice T. No, I don't think he was. <laughs> <laughs> it was the serious face that got me. I was like, well, maybe he was. Maybe he was really. Is. <laughs> but anyway, early Law and Order is pretty good. Dark- <laughs> It's good for a while too, but there's this French actor on there. He plays Lenny. Oh man, yeah, the you thing got that was me. good about Law and Order was <laughs> you didn't have to dive into the personal oh. lives of like the detectives like you did on SVU. All you knew about right. was that he had a couple ex-wives and he would reference them every once in a while. And that was like all you needed to know about Lenny. And that was why it was good, because you were just the seasoned hardened detectives that were just in there to solve the crime father you've been shockingly quiet about this are you not a law and order fan no i think the best thing about it was watching it with my dad that was and the he, same i watched with my stepdad for sure the, that, that's yeah. half the experience in the 80s yeah. that's the best part about it you know yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. i think i think now like you know it's popular to watch you know people get locked up for real now you know. <laughs> oh yeah, that's a sober. First forty eight is. First forty eight. Yeah. That's yeah, they wrong. were they were like, why should we base this on a true story? Let's just no. actually film them getting locked up. That's yeah. you know, here gosh, we go. Go get the real thing. That mm-hmm. that show hurts my stomach whenever I watch it because it's just like that dude's actually sitting in there 
with an actual detective and it's just like mm-hmm. this dude like 25 years in prison and i'm just like i can't handle that like that i mean like i'm an orthodox christian i shouldn't look away like that's a reality, mm-hmm. that's, a reality yeah. of, that's what's going on it's like yeah i shouldn't just look away and like change it to something else that makes me more comfortable like yeah but it does hurt my stomach i'm just like oh my gosh that well, so I think so. I think not looking away might bring us to the thing that I wanted to talk about today. So I I, de- I derailed our our thing because I thought this is worth talking about. I just saw Jonathan Pajot. Obviously, this is what's on everybody's mind. I just saw Jonathan Pajot tweeted a few minutes before we were about to go on. He's like, I've never had so many people request that I look at the symbolism of an event, and you could probably guess what it is. So like, I'm I'm gonna get at it, but. I didn't necessarily want to do that, but I thought that we might have an opportunity to talk about this thing that happened with with Travis Scott at the at the festival in Houston, like okay. on, on a few on a few different levels. But what I didn't what what I don't what want happened? to talk about be, what because of, so oh the Astro World thing yeah yeah so well, I guess I guess maybe that's what we could talk about what what happened right so. Basically, well, or maybe it's like the reaction, what's going on. So there was this big festival, you know, that, that he has. There was this big festival. And um, a whole, like, I think like 20 people died or something like that. And there's like a, the, the police were saying there was maybe like a, a crush at the front. But of all the thousands of people taking videos, there's no video of this crush at the front. It all happens kind of at once during Travis Scott's set at like nine o'clock. There is video of people like having these attacks and sort of like falling out. There's a couple of videos that people are out there of like young men, for the most part, having what either looks like epileptic seizures. One is like going like this, having yeah. heart attacks, then getting compressions from people, people yelling like here, here. All yeah. of this is taking place while Travis Scott set is going on. Right. Oh, wow. And so there's all kinds of stuff. And the symbolism around there was like really. It's eerie. There, there, there was a lot of eerie symbolism, but the, I guess sort of some of the things that I wanted to talk about was one, you know, well, he's been a dark per I've been following him since he first came out. He's been a real like super talented artist, but really dark character in terms of his music that never turned me off particularly to him. Um, oh, like me, I thought, me. go ahead. Let me, like I, I'm going to play the role because I, I really don't know. Go. I'm, I'm as ignorant as possible. Please. So when we talk about Travis Scott and you say darkness, are, do you mean like tricky? Like how tricky was dark? Yes, 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 yes. I mean, what what I mean, so if people want to see like even from the beginning how he was, like the this first single that he dropped, the song called Upper Echelon, it's with T.I. and 2 Chains. But this video, the first video that dropped is like, if people go and watch it, all you got to watch is like the first minute and a half. It's It's a really well shot, but very dark. It's like him walking through the woods somewhere in the yes. south, obviously. Can I go ahead? Can I, can I say this? Okay. Go ahead. It's, you know, I don't know when in the, I don't even know if I can call it hip hop or I don't know when this within these genres, it became a trend, you know, to have this dark to come with all what you're with with uh, all black eye to come with a uh, do you do you get what I'm saying with upside down crosses and the mm-hmm. six, like it, it became a trend almost like this is the cool thing to do now within mm-hmm. the media and almost like you know the darker you can be the more uh, the more you can look like you know that uh, you're for what this it's like a symbol of some type of fake freedom. From what I would say, they would think that it's freedom from from order, but really, you know, I, I don't know if they know what they're really asking for. No, I think, and I think that that's a big. He was definitely he was on it, but he didn't start it. I think yeah. Kanye Kanye was working with him in the beginning, and like the Yeezus album came out around that time. We're talking like 2013, but Jay Z was doing some stuff, but it wasn't necessarily dark. There was all this yeah. these symbols. Yeah, but it wasn't really dark. But yeah, you're right. This something happened. Three Six Mafia kind of did some stuff like and hip hop started to get like really dark. But father, the thing about this is, you know, we were talking about Kanye earlier. 
like earlier in the week, you and I had a little yeah. back and forth about Kanye. Travis Scott has been around Kanye this whole time that Kanye has been having this sort of transformation. Travis Scott has been like right there. He's been on all the albums. He's been on, he's been right there. And like his lyrics have seemed like, Oh, well maybe this guy might be coming to Christ. Mm -hmm. And so like one of the things that I wanted to talk about since like you have a background in music, I, I don't know, Ser Seraphim, do you have a background in music as well? I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, yes. Yes. Okay. So kind of all of us. So, it's perfect then, right? And it's like, I've, I've, for me, what I kind of wanted to talk about, Father, and maybe this is a jumping off point, and, and if, if this is good, I think this will probably, tr this will probably, you'll be able to, to answer this. Like, for me, like, my, my trajectory was definitely in, like, a dark aesthetic, I would say, mm. right? Like, the aesthetic was dark, but it was kind of like, there was a sexiness to it and whatever. It wasn't like outright satanic or demonic. It wasn't like high energy in that way, right? But there was a, a darkness, yeah. sultriness maybe to it, something like that. But yeah. one of the things as, I, as I've been looking back as I thought about this thing, and people are blaming Travis Scott for this, and they're looking at this, this thing and they're saying, oh, he's demonic and he's doing all of this. One of the things that I look back is that there was, if I look back, I see a feedback loop between sort of me and my aesthetic, and I'm not trying to be dark, I'm not trying to be demonic, but then people will come around that there will be this little bit of feedback and it'll be like, oh, just, and then I'll be like, oh, well, maybe that seems okay. And yeah. then, so I'll move forward and my aesthetic will get, will change even that much more and something will change inside of me too. Yeah. You know, it, it changed. And then it was just like, it was a series of these things, sort of me reaching out and then something reaching back me reaching out and something reaching back, even though I wasn't like actively trying to do it, right? Like I didn't see myself as actively trying to be ma malevolent. And so, yeah. I mean, I, I know father as well that you, and Andrew, we were even talking about Andrew being in, in, into metal for a long time. And it's like, what, it, how should my we people, feel about like, a, go ahead, Seraphim, my, please. My people die for lack of knowledge, right? So, mm. I think when you when when you're involved with something and you have scales on your eyes, it's really hard to know exactly what you're um, communicating with. You know what I'm saying? Just like you said, there's something going in. There's, there's you have something coming out and there's something coming in. I would ask, what's that something? How do we de define that? Hmm. Yeah, that's interesting because. Uh, when I first started, um, when I like became a catechumen, it was for the first time, like certain music started to feel bad and like certain stuff started to feel bad. And like, bro, I can't go back and listen. I tried to go back this week just to see and listen to old mixtapes of mine. Yeah. And like, I, I got, dude, I got two minutes in to like the latest one I did before I basically stopped. And the, every hair on my body yeah. stood up. And I was like, ooh, my immediate feeling was like, I got to turn this off. Yeah. I don't know what this is doing to me, right? Like, I got to turn it off. It was, I, had I yeah. couldn't imagine, couldn't have imagined that I would have that like visceral response to it. So like one of the bands that I've talked about specifically with Father that I actually had a little bit of trouble giving up because I really was a huge fan of them was this band Ghost. And it's like this like proggy stoner band. Uh, I... You know, it's, I mean, it's outright, I mean, there's nothing redemptive about it, really. It's outright blasphemous. It's the guy dresses like a, an undead pope with an upside down cross on his, on his, and anyway, but. Uh, was he, but, but was he, was he into the literature? Because that would, or does that go along the line of what we were talking about far as trendy, trying to be trendy? No. That's kind of where, and I won't hammer on this because I'm really interested because this is something that father and I have talked a lot about is like, who's okay and who's not okay to listen to and what's the spirit behind music and like, uh, man, I'm sorry, I will try not to get too into this, but obviously coming into the church and being into metal was really difficult because there's a lot of things I had to reconcile about it and eventually the battle kind of lost and really I just kind of found other music and especially within sobriety like I can't just listen to metal all the time like 
that's a one generally if you're doing it the way i want to do it, it's a one emotion music and that's it's awesome you know like mm -hmm. like the endorphins and serotonin and just like stuff just like dumping into your brain all the time with how amazing it is but finding the right metal you know the right things to listen to that have that spiritual quality because it's out there it's without a doubt out there and you know there's nothing wrong with listening to you know um whatever like swedish you know melodic death metal that doesn't necessarily but the point being that like i listened was listening to ghost one time and i remember exactly where i was driving and i have really just started to wrestle with this idea of oh crap like i'm not sure i can listen to this anymore and i was really in a lot of denial because a lot of my identity was wrapped up yeah. in it and stuff like that and <clears throat> at a certain point like i had to really come down to well do i believe that this dude is actually a satanist yeah yeah at a certain point what father said the other recording like at the end of the day it doesn't really matter because he's still singing songs of praise to the devil whether or not he believes the devil is real and i'm talking about ghost here i'm not sure i'm talking about the same kind of music you guys are talking about but yeah. with ghost, that dude is outright like like praising satan so it doesn't really matter if he believes it or not i mean it's worse if he does i think in some respects but also like oh there's travis scott has definitely there's definitely some outright demonic uh like pray, praise of the devil yeah. not in his recent not in his recent stuff but certainly yeah. at a certain point in his career no I doubt feel, i feel the same way you know i used to love the death tones you know, yeah. and I there's 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 some stuff that they say that I just can't I can't digest it. You know, it's it's something that it 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 hits my it uh hits my it hits my heart a little bit. You know, and it's yeah. like, is this right? Maybe I shouldn't. It was just one line, but there's 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 a lot of undertones here. You know, Father, you've been I, I haven't. I wouldn't have expected on this topic that you'd be uh, quite, quite so circumspect, uh, <laughs> but I, I have a, I have a feeling there's, and there's, I would just like there's to something say, about to come, to come right now. To, to kind of set the basis <laughs> for this conversation, my priest, Father Turbos, got me into death grips. He was the person who showed me death grips. So that's just a little bit of like foundation of who Father Turbo and Twin Eagle like that yeah. that yeah that metal like doom band whatever from uh utah so that's like that's the heat that he's that's like the foundation father well and and our intro right and the intro and the and intro. our intro this this might help some people to understand our intro so okay i think i believe he's ready <laughs> <laughs> um there is uh an energy that we can we can feed off of, and that energy, um, demonic energy is real. And what happens also is that your participation in the energies of God are also very real. So as a catechumen, you're experiencing a kind of permeation of your being by these energies, even though you haven't been baptized or chrismated yet. You're participating in them in a degree that you weren't prior. And so the response to certain things unrehearsed um, are evidence of the reality of, of the energies that you're experiencing of God, but also kind of more pertinent to our conversation, the demonic energies that are present in, um, in music, right? Um, if anyone's ever read Timaeus, <laughs> what, what you what you under, what you understand is that um, modes of music are like modes of music are um, they function in such a way that the the influence on the human soul is real, right? It, it gets us back to this understanding of moving away from these kind of evolutionary predis predispositions that we, presuppositions that we have, even though, even though like we don't think we do, we have them, where we will say to ourselves, well, we've kind of learned to adapt to experience 
this mode of music like this or whatever. But the reality of it is, is that these modes of music have, a, they're designed in such a way to actually accomplish that goal, to, to produce an experience, a feeling, whatever the situation is. So when you begin to understand that the process- Wait, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Father, I'm sorry, Father. Can we just back up one second? Because like you said something, I wanna make sure that I understand. Yeah. Um, the, it's, it sounds like you're saying that the, that the chronology of what people think in terms of the causation mm -hmm. is flipped. So like a lot of people would be like, oh, somebody's experimenting. They find this form of music and then, or this mode of music. And then, oh, it happens to evoke this response. And that's just sort of like an evolutionary thing. It sounds, maybe I am hearing this wrong. It sounds almost like you're saying the desire for a particular emotional response is first, and then the mode comes about in order to accomplish that. Or am I hearing it wrong? Um, you're hearing it just a tad wrong, but um, and not wrong, but let's say parallel, actually. Right? So for instance, um, Tony Iommi, and the the modes that he used to produce yes 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 <laughs> right when, when you listen to sabbath um what what's invoked there it, it's real like the darkness that you feel there that's the purpose of that mode that's why it exists right and so Depending on depending on how you want to approach it, I lean more towards, um, let's say, the gift being given of inspiration, right? You know, mankind being given insight into these modes by certain intelligences, and these intel and like that's the purpose of it, right? Music is to like. Once you remove this filter of entertainment, then it all starts making sense, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, if you can imagine, like, uh, if you can imagine, God help me on this one. If you can imagine, because um, there's, there's certain music in my mind I'm thinking of even right now where it feels like um, a funeral dirge, let's say, yeah. right? Well, what if I was to tell you, it's not so much that, you know, man needed um, something to express and articulate what he was experiencing at the death of a loved one, right? But rather the death of the loved one is, the, is like the material manifestation of what this music, mm -hmm. That's that's what I mean. Mm -hmm. What do you what do you think about? And this is someone that uh, Father had put me on, but I, I think about this. Okay, what do you think about someone like uh, Wolf in Hand, who he has a desire for you know this almost like this mosaic kind of you know uh, agenda. Um, what do you think about someone like that? Like listening to someone like that who who's not necessarily orthodox, but you can relate to uh, some of the lyrics of, of the music, even though his objective in writing or recording a song is not necessarily ours. Yeah, I mean, Father Turbo and Woven Hand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um... You know, it's funny because the the cattle on a thousand hills belongs to the Lord, you know? And so um, I think that the human experience in of itself of, of yearning and longing and searching is valuable in of itself. I think that there's much to be um, understood and explored there. But this gets, this gets into some tricky uh, territory because um, I'm going to say something that's like super unpopular right now, but um, not everybody can handle everything. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? 
not everybody can handle everything. Um, and I, I think that's that's like the big issue. That's not one, that's one of the big issues that we're dealing with is because when you start getting into areas like this, um, you know, let's let's pull a Marvel reference out. And this is, you know, gonna scandalize some people, but um, in Doctor Strange, if you remember um, the ancient one, right? The whole arc there was um, the, the ancient one was actually pulling from Dormammu's mm -hmm. realm, mm -hmm. just siphoning off just a little bit, right? And so, um, what is it? Is it Marduk? No, was it Mar What's his name? Um, yeah, it's Marduk, I think, his buddy. Got super mad because he's a purist. And he was like, no, like you can't siphon off anything at all, you know? And so, but, but what's interesting is in that arc, with him becoming so incensed that she was siphoning off some of this quote unquote dark energy, he in that purity, that longing for purity actually turned like turns him yes. completely to the side of, of, of villainy, right? So the reason why I say this is because we were talking about this earlier today over dinner. Like reading the lives of the saints is so important. Because the lives of the saints, they show us this space in which um, when Solomon talks about, forget the paraphrase, but basically, don't be too righteous. Why destroy yourself? Right? The saints show us what it means to be wholly dedicated to God. Right? But the key word there is, you know, the, the pun on the, on the word there, holy, W-H-O, you know, completely. Hmm. wholly dedicated to God, but also wholly set apart. Mm -hmm. And to the holy, um, one of the things you learn about the saints is they don't, they don't answer to the laws and the rules hmm. like everyone else does, mm -hmm. right? There's a, there's a freedom that's there, which is shocking and scandalous, right? That's why like the Yudo Divi, like the holy fools are such a thing because it's like, they, they shock and they scandalize the conventional wisdom of what it means to be good and more and all those things, right? So another way to understand this, to understand this is that they, they're able to sit at a different table hmm. than, than others can. And so I think that we should never strive to do that. Like, I don't strive to do that. I just strive to be as close to my master as I can right as close as my father as I can and you know if I find myself doing that then you know he'll keep me from any strange thing I trust him to do that mm -hmm. yeah. I trust him to do that and I, I trust him to chastise me when I need to be chastised you know what yeah. I mean yeah um, but that that's what I think about that and I just I think that there's um you know, one of the greatest gifts to have is discernment and really discerning something, you know, it's like, we could go on a whole nother thing right now too, because like he's, he, it's, in, it's just, it's interesting you bring him up because he's recently taken a hard turn to the left, which I can't follow him there. And you're talking about woven hand. Yep. And okay. so, so for people who know me, if anybody knows me, like, if you know me, you probably know who Woman Hand is. And if you know who Woman Hand is, it's because I turned you on to him. Not to be that guy, but yeah. like, yeah. that's, I think that's a fair statement everyone would yeah. agree with. We're talking generations of people love Woven Hand because of me. Now, I say that because for me now to say I cannot follow him where he's going, that should tell you something. It should tell you that he's turned a hard left on something. He did a collaboration. You might know this guy, Sabrina Carpenter Blue. And so Car Carpenter Brew is this, um, I think he's Norwegian. I don't know, but he's, he's an electronic guy. Brilliant stuff, right? He does this kind of like um, lo-fi, retro, 8-bit um, digital stuff, you know, but just real high-intensity <laughs> stuff, whatever. And anyway, he's, he's done this collaboration with him. And in this video, it's kind of funny, um, because I was thinking about, well, it would be great for us. It would have been great for us to do this 
tonight, but we'll find it some other time of like being able to pull up video and do commentary on stuff because hey, I want to come back to that. I that would be awesome. That. But like, continue on. There's a whole thing I want to. We can do it. That. Yeah, we can do because, it. <laughs> because this this new video that he's done with his carpenter brute, it's like I don't even know if he knows what's happening in there. But I sent I've sent the the one with the graphene and the one with the 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 black graphene coming out of that figure. Do you remember I sent that to you, Cyprian? Um, there's there's some stuff in there, and there's some stuff in there about Horus that's happening. And you know, I don't know if David Eugene knows about Crowley and the the diadem of Horus and the prophecies with Horus and the and the the bathing of the blood that Crowley talked about. But all that stuff is all that all we're entering into this kind of parallel of all these things. Speaking Crowley, Jay Z, right? I mean that. That's Does it matter, thing. Father? I think this is an important th thing that you're saying here, because I think that it's also something that people are keying in on with this Travis Scott thing. Like, there's all this imagery that I know Travis Scott was not responsible for. He didn't do the marketing. I mean, we've, we've all done this. We've done, you know, I've done innumerable festivals, you know what I mean? And it's like, the artist isn't responsible for the, the imaging that's going on. He didn't build up the stages. He probably didn't even have, have a chance to, you know, get, get to approve them. It's probably not even in his writer to be able to do that. Right. You know what I mean? And right. so it's like, but then the question becomes, how responsible is he for step when he steps out on that stage? Like, oh, does it matter? Does it matter if these people know these things, if they end up being a part of it? Like, that's my question. In this. Like, yeah, it does. I, I would say, too, if the do the lyrics match what's going on? Yes does, and no. Right. Like, do, it's do there's, the there's some stuff that's abstract. OK, OK. There's some stuff that's abstract enough that if you're like, yeah, I could I could see I could. Ma and it's like, oh, man. But then again, you could put it on something else. And it's like, OK, well. You know, and so that's that's where I wonder that it's like if somebody does this thing and we say like, 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 father, you brought up Jay-Z. I'm sorry to interrupt you because it's like the perfect I think you were going to this place. But it's like you and I had the discussion and I was like, I don't know if Jay-Z actually knew what those things are. And I think your you know, your response to me was, I think, right. And it made me really think so, like, I'll, I'll let you I'll let you continue. But it's like a lot of people are jumping on Travis Scott and saying he's a devil worshiper. He's all of this stuff. And I'm like, where, I'm not sure. Where's the line? But my thing is this. Where is, where's the, where's the line from where you start? Okay. You start and you say, okay, I'm not a part of the marketing. I'm not, but then you go home and you watch your own video and then you go with, you go back to those same people and say, you know what, we're going to do another show. You're in charge of it again. Well, this and is then, the, this, the, this I experienced personally, right? Like okay. I was on, I was on a reality TV show, like for six seasons and I watched <laughs> like in the beginning, I wasn't responsible for any of the way that I was presented. But then yeah. I did watch the show, see the way that I was edited, see the character that they were trying to bring out. And, you know, I'll be darned if I didn't go back the next season and start acting like that character and then watch the editing again. And then here comes this character more. And then I go and embody that the next season and for six seasons. And by the end, I was the exact character that they wanted me to be in the first place. Right. And it's like, here's the feedback loop. Sounds like a spell. Exactly. It does yeah. sound like exactly. And that and that's the problem that we're dealing with is that we use these terms spell, energy, influence, and we're not really taking an account. Like we may not even be we may not even be having the same uh, definition of terms, right? Um, and I don't mean necessarily us here for. I'm saying anytime we discuss this, this is the reality is that um, like we have to we have to step back real quick and understand that we're not coming from a place of necessarily our subjective experience and opinion, right? We have a king, right? Getting getting back to some original stuff. We have a king who who ex he he is sovereign and we to varying degrees should be understanding that we don't mistake the freedom that he gives us 
for him being lax or him being weak in sovereignty. It's, 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 it reveals the goodness of who he is. And also his sovereignty is revealed in the fact that he's not threatened by the autonomy of his creation, right? But with all that being said, there is, a, there is some real hard lines and objective truths that we run into in regards to these things. And the reason why I'm saying that is because we can become uh, distracted and even our, our ability to focus and our ability to discern these things can be diffused with the multiplicity of aspects of it, right? Well, is it the industry? Is it the artist? Is it the lyric? Is it, the, is it whatever? And it's like, no, 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 you don't understand. It's the whole thing. Yeah. And when, and when you start trying to pull it apart, like what's the thing that gets it, right? That's the Western sorcery right there. Yeah. The Western sorcery is to want to dissect it, pull it apart and be like, well, this is how I get the money out of it. Yeah. Like, this is right here is actually when the transubstantiation happens. And in yeah. fact, the, the, the fact that we're even using the term transubstantiation is the problem, right? We don't do that. And we don't do it out of an ignorance. We don't do it out of some kind of servile, you know, platitude. We do it because we learn to see without looking. Yeah. And when we see without looking, then we we're able to operate like our father to a greater degree, right? We're able to see the whole situation. And the trick is, well, what is it? Which part of it is it? That's when you start, that's where the world and the enemies want us to get away from seeing and they start looking. Look at this aspect over here. Well, what about over here? And you start putting your focus in on that and you've lost the picture. Yeah. We have yeah. to step back. We have to understand, okay, like get back to our fundamentals. Because yeah. one, one of the problems with, I'll tell you right now, it, it can work. But for a lot of people, it's going to start coming up short. A lot of people who have been, and God bless them, a lot of people who are like um, awakening to, to things through the, this kind of like current season we've been in of, of symbolic language, it's wonderful. But the thing is, if you just stay there and you start dealing with symbolic language as like a dabbler <laughs> or like as a hobbyist, right? You won't actually develop the faculty for, for where the symbol leads you to the thing itself. Yeah. Which is the purpose of the symbol, right? Like and, that, yeah, and that's where a lot of the people, that's why some, I'll give you an example. Um, like we got a brother in the church who, I mean, he's, he's an ad man, right? He's, that's, he, that's his job. He's an advertisement, right? And he has, you know, I guess like a natural proclivity towards that type of work. He has a natural talent, which allows him to do well, but he's, he's developed a skill, right? And in that skill, he's very, he, he's really deaf now. He can say like, well, see this, see that, see this. And all of this has really, it really brought him to this place of really beginning to embrace Christ on a deeper level, right? But that's the thing is it brought him to that place. And, and, and once, he, once he came to that place, his skill set actually deepened, right? But if he didn't actually cross that threshold, right? Yeah. You, you actually kind of like begin to lose that, that ability to really discern what's happening between these things yeah. because the distraction comes, right? Mm -hmm. Because then you start focusing on like, okay, well, well such and such did this and you know, if you make music, you want to say, well, how can I do that? How can I get that, this or that? And you never get past this place of being able to say, like, okay, like, not even just what, but who is this really representing? Yeah. You, um, yeah. So I, I think that's really important to say, because getting back to the Jay-Z thing, and we had this conversation, like, I don't, I don't, I mean, I, I'm definitely in the camp of, um, he knows a lot more than what people want to give him credit for. Yeah. yeah. Jay Talk about Jay-Z, right? Yeah. He knows a lot more than what people want to give him credit for. Um, and I think 
that reality speaks to something that we all are kind of aware of now in the last, I mean, some of us have been knowing, right? All, pretty much all of us here have been knowing, but definitely within the last 18 months, two years, there's been an uncovering. Yeah. So now people are able to see that like, okay, whether it's gonna be like these, like, okay, who saw the Converse ads from like, what, three months ago? Did you see those Converse ads? No. It, it was around the same time, um, uh, what's your boy's name? Uh, Lil Nas X, right? It was With the, the, the same, Satan shoes, the yeah, Satan it, shoes, it yeah. Was around the same time, he was doing that whole thing, that first run of the shoes and everything. Well, we need to start getting some some pull up screen share ability. There's there's this. I'm gonna have it on deck for next time for sure. They, they did this run, and it's just like it's a pentagram, you know, in the, yeah. in the Converse shoe. Yeah. Um, and even the models, it's just like yeah. it's kind of like we were saying earlier. It's like it's so overtly like. I, it's not even hot topic de demonic, but it's just it's so overtly trying to be quote unquote demonic. Not even yeah. like not goth, right? Yeah. Not kind of dark, but just like let's try to actually look evil. Let's let's try to yeah. look like uh, you know what I mean. That's is there an energy? Is there an energy within the symbol, even without the knowledge? Yes. I that, wanted to get into this whole thing. That, that's uh, why I'm bringing that. Forgive me. I'm glad you said it. Just because people are like, what the hell is he talking about? That, <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's, that's exactly why I'm, I'm bringing this up. It, that you just, thank you for the underhand pitch. That's exactly why I brought up the Converse thing. That's exactly why I bring up because there's an energy there, which isn't contingent upon your belief of it. It doesn't matter. Mm. It doesn't matter what you think Jay Z is doing. It doesn't matter what you think, you know, the CEO at Converse is like, I'll even one up you. I'll even one up you. Let's just assume that the, that the you know, ad, ad campaign head guy for this one Converse thing, let's just like say he doesn't even care. You know what I mean? The guy likes to drink mimosas and watch, you know, whatever, you know, Atlanta House. Law and Order SVU. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? It, it, it doesn't matter. It, it, it actually, it serves the purpose even more so, assuming he doesn't, right? Because then you begin to see the real, the real influence. And, and here's the reality. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, right? Mm -hmm. We were dealing with intelligences that are ancient. And the, the experience of what happened this last weekend, I think... For instance, the real spell is now in the confusion of what happened. <clears throat> that's that's the real spell. Because now people are like giving the energy and the attention. And if enough of it comes, something will start to manifest. And that's what they well, they're want. posting the symbols, Father. Like I had 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 these people, the people who are claiming to be against it and who are calling him a a, a devil worshiper and he's all of this they're the ones through whom i've i saw the symbols that they're saying were being presented so they're actually the ones propagating the symbols mm. right that's right that's, yeah that's so, exactly it that's yeah. exactly it so yeah. i've had a question um but really quick didn't isn't that beginning riff from sabbath's first album that me, 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 you know, that like the real do me one. Mm -hmm. I forget the track. So it wasn't that like I'd heard that that was like <clears throat> that resonance or that dissonance was like a medieval technique for like some yeah. level. And yeah. that's why he chose that. That and then he had that whole experience with seeing the headless black figure like yeah, a came to him in his bed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, and that's it, the one that Ozzy there's, did. Okay. There's it wasn't a, Ozzy, it was, it was Geezer Butler. There's, oh, there's, yeah. The, there's an interview with uh, with uh, I'm, I want to say it's it's Crazy Bone from Bone Thug and Harmony, right? And he yeah, and he's talking about how they're in the studio, and uh, they start to play these chords over and over, and basically like he was saying how he started to see like physical light, 
going around the studio and then he just had like these words just coming to him and he just started rapping words that he didn't even write you know and, they um, might have been the first ones when you were bringing up like when did this but actually actually bone thugs might have been the because uh, no, oh man no, 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 mr no. ouija and all that stuff no, in no, hip-hop no. in hip-hop was there no, something no, no. before that because because i was hanging back i was hanging back on this one because i <laughs> there's i gotta be that guy there is a group <laughs> called insane poetry and insane okay. poetry i think you're gonna say clown posse bring it bring it dada bring it dada to the slaughter Insane, insane poetry. They were the first horror rap that I that I know of, predating, way predating Bone Thugs, right? And I mean, I mean, these guys were brutal, brutal. You know what's interesting? I don't yeah. like that. I like that you brought Bone Thugs up because they didn't have the I, I feel like they're much more in the lineage of travis scott mm. where they don't have the like like three six mafia i think had like outright satanic themes to them in in terms of their image every you just knew like well it's triple six mafia right it's like six 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 like this is it bone thugs was kind of this weird thing because they went pop they didn't go but the songs that they went pop with were kind of uplifting you wouldn't know that when you actually went and got the album right that that you were going to really hear you're going to hear it go backwards they were going to talk about ouija boards they're going to talk about the devil you're going to hear all of they're going to summon the devil in some of these things and it's like it it to me that and this is what i was trying to when i was talking with people about this incident i said that because some people were bringing up like, oh, well, the same not night like Slipknot was playing and like, you know, Slipknot feels to me like one of these bands like War or something like that, where it's like it's so overt in what they're doing. And, and I'm like, listen, if it's turning you off immediately like that, like, yes, there's power in the symbols, but it's not the thing that's going to like the one that's going to get you is the one that you don't even know. Behold, and then you're in the devil you know? comes as an angel of light. Yeah, yeah. Like the Beatles, yeah. the Stones. Yeah, I mean, it, see you at the crossroads, right? Like, yes, see you at the crossroads, and like yeah. the way that, like, we we can do a whole thing on that because the crossroads opens up a whole type of cultural ancestral understanding. Yeah, of what that means right. And if you know anything about the crossroads and what that means, well, who do you meet at the crossroads? You meet the, the devil. devil. To go at the crossroads, that's and right. and he's going to teach you how to play, play blues, the old blues yeah. man. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Uh, oh, so, brother, we're out now. That's right. Uh, so, <laughs> of course, of course. So, like, so, so this this is the thing when you start understanding that, like, on the one hand, this is the argument I have with someone, um, and it, I mean, part of it was me being contrarian a little bit, just trying to be spicy. But I was like, what? because Jay-Z is, you know, you perceive to be some kind of like black thug rap rapper. He can't know anything about Aleister Crowley. Yeah. That this was the debate I was having with someone, you know what I mean? But on the other hand, it's like, yeah, it kind of doesn't really matter because when you start seeing like, and again, Bone Thugs is like the perfect example because, you know what I mean? First of the month, you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. you, you got these things where it's, it's innocuous, it slides in there and, and you just think that they're talking about, you know what I mean? Ghetto culture, you know what I mean? Experience all that stuff. But then when you begin to understand that, that is really the kind of like, that's the bait. That's, that's, that's the way yeah. that it, because that's the way that's innocuous. That's the way that it, it slips into the broader culture. And I, and I would just say this, because this is one of those things where Sarah and I were talking a lot about this this weekend. Like, I'll, I'll just give you a good example of, of how, how these spells work. Like people are looking for the over the top kind of LARPing thing of like, of like metal kids. Like, you know what I mean? Metal kids dressed in black and like goth kids, blah, blah, blah. Um, but I'm gonna tell you where you really see the demons unleashed. It's in the hood, right? 
you when when you <laughs> the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Right? Like let like let's let's kind of like this is great. Let's even just start kind of like seeing how this applies and affects society, like real life, right? Let's pull it out of kind of like the realm of up here and let's get on, let's, let's get on the tangible ground for just a little bit, right? The kid who's listening to Mayhem or the kid who's listening to, you know, back in the day, whatever it's going to be, you know what I mean? Danzig or whatever, the, whatever, the, whatever you want to kind of pick as like, this person's really doing it. They're really into like summoning or doing whatever. You know what I mean? Sam Hain, whatever. Okay. Death Spell Omega. We'll say Death Spell Omega. Okay. Okay. That yeah, there's just like an orthodoxy. Let let's just look at like their their social strata and what's happening there. We're gonna have a real conversation, right? Probably some generalizations here. But probably middle class, right? Um, have enough resources to be dangerous, you know what I mean? Um, and the way that it affects this strat of people are things like, you know, despondency, despair, suicide, like apathy, nihilism, all that stuff is real. I'm not I'm not discounting that. that I'm just I'm just trying to say like, these are the ways that these demonic energies manifest on a, on a real practical level, right? Not only does it inflame the passions, but those passions are inflamed with a very strategic way to affect, you know, populations, okay? You guys tracking with me so far? Okay. Yes. Now let's go and let's look and see how really dark hip hop has been in regards of not, not the aesthetic of darkness, but the energy, because that's the point. The spell isn't about the, you know, the black and yeah. those aesthetics. It's like, what, what's the actual fruit of it, right? Well, the actual fruit of it is, I mean, lust, greed, envy, um, murder, all of these things are fratricide. You know what I mean? Um, materialistic this this materialistic view that you know that your 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 precious soul is not as it's not worth as much as this you're giving your soul is worth it because you'll be able to have your heaven on earth i mean listen listen i was i was on my way to put the order in for dinner tonight right and I think about this, you know, I have to numb myself out from it. Cause if I thought about it all the time, I would go crazy. Right. God, God, God forgive me. You know what I mean? Um, but to the left of me, there's a dude. I mean, someone can be like, don't judge, but I'm just telling you, this is the reality, right? It is normal where, where we live. It is normal for a 45 year old man to be in a car blaring his music as loud as possible and every type of obscene pornographic suggestion yeah. And, yeah. and word is being used like earshot of any child. Yeah. yeah, That's normal. Think about that. That's, it's it, like, do I need to actually start talking about those things to kind of get people to understand what I'm saying here? Like, it's 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 normal, right? I mean, people got all. This is what I, I kind of chuckled about with with Nicki Minaj and the um, what was it? Fetty Wap? What was it? Uh, <laughs> what? Just just Wap? Just yeah. Wap? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Whatever, Fetty Wap. I don't even know what that is. <laughs> because, so people are like, oh man, this is that. But I'm like, to me, that's just. It's all like that. Right, I mean, yeah. I, I hear yeah. I hear it every day, all day. Yeah. Right. Explicit, yeah. Ex explicit. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, it's audio pornography. Yeah. It's audio snuff films. Yeah. In many cases. Yeah. Right? In many yeah. cases, it is. Right. That, that's the story yeah. being told. In many in cases. Most, 
can I forgive me for correcting you, Cyprian? In most cases, most yeah, I'd say that's fair. Aren't blaring, <laughs> most people aren't blaring, uh, whatever. Uh, I'm trying to think of like a whole Drake. Scene. Drake, yeah, yeah. <laughs> see, and he's not even, and he's not even wholesome, but he's just pop. You know, like, you know, it's like, if so, and this is very true, Father. That it's like, if you're gonna, when I was in that time, right? Mm-hmm. It's like when I, when I was in that time, like the time when it goes up to eleven, mm-hmm. so everybody can hear, is like the most offensive. It's not going to be some some ballad it's that stuff that i was listening to as well you know what i mean it's not going to be something like that but it's good like that i might listen to at home like with my girl or whatever but it's like no and i might listen to in the car on the way to the gym you know chilling down whatever but all the way up the most offensive thing possible right yeah right right like i'm trying i'm trying to offend somebody it's a sonic attack and and the thing is is what people don't realize is that offense is, it's all food responses. It's all feeding responses. Because yeah. what's being elicited there yeah. is, is energy to be fed on. Now, now look. That. Wait, wait, was, go, go. Wait, 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 wait. Don't just go past that. Don't just go past <laughs> that. <laughs> I think there's going to be people listening say, wait a minute, wait a minute. Yeah. Food, food for whom? Mm-hmm. And like, can you explain just go into that a little further please so it's never just for the sake of offending someone's you know sensibilities right the the response it's hunting right um these these demons are are vampiric they feed off of the the energy, the response that's given from things like fear. That's why they seek to invoke it. They feed off of it. They, they find power in it, right? And so the responses that's elicited from the offense, it isn't just to kind of like make someone mad. It's just that when someone is now offended and mad, now they're able to feed off of this your your offense there right it's this it's a contagion that um it, <laughs> that provides a, a a ground in which they can now greater they, they can have greater um entrenchment in this plane right in this plane of existence the way that they the way that they cross over the way that they manifest primarily is a bridge through human emotions. Human emotions are the things that facilitate the excess of cortisol and dopamine and all these things. When cortisol and dopamine, all these things begin to pump and um, elicit, you know, they get you from the wizard into the lizard, right? When that happens, then there's a, your filter is down and you're now susceptible to greater influence. The greater influence you're susceptible to, your behaviors now can be modified. You, and you now see this is the this is the loop, right? And then yeah. and once you are people it's like having you in a state of fear. It's just like people, when people are in a state yes, of fear. Yes, because when people talk about tr- trauma in communities, what they don't understand is, and this is this is the theme with all of this, right? They don't understand the spell. Yes, there's trauma in communities, and yes, that's why certain people groups respond a certain way. It's not that they are biologically created and determined to act this way. What it is, is this, this culture of trauma, right? Getting outside of the trigger zone, it, it's there to facilitate something. That's the thing that people miss. It's there to facilitate something, right? The more that you can facilitate debauchery, the more that you can facilitate fear, the more that you can facilitate envy, right? Um, I, I'm, you know, Cipri and I, Cipri and I had to talk about this early on in our relationship. Like, I've been waiting for the time to say this to the world. You know, I'm, I keep trying to get the hate mail, but we'll see if this is the one that does it. Um, the blight that I see, it comes from envy. Mm-hmm. The blight that I see in the neighborhoods that I live and that our parish is in. It comes from envy, right? And 
it's it has power the evil eye is real it's palpable it's palpable it's palpable the evil eye is real and the evil eye isn't something that you engage like a talisman although you can right it's much more insidious than that what is the evil eye huh what is the evil eye the evil eye is when someone at, for the context that I'm speaking of, right? The evil eye, the evil eye is a curse, right? This and our the church affirms this. The evil eye is a curse, right? We have prayers against the evil eye in our church, right? But the evil eye is a curse. And this curse off the problem with this curse is it is oftentimes done unknowingly by the person cursing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So the woman who is envious, right? And we've all experienced a, an envious woman, right? The, the change in the countenance, the change in the behavior, it's a curse. They don't oh, even, you can feel, I mean, you, you can feel it. Feel, oh, you feel it. It's, and, oh. And it's a doorway. It's a doorway. And so that envy, man, that you begin to now hit this critical mass where it begins to be palpable in the air. They talk about, um, violence right like i'll tell you this right from 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 experience in fact and clinicians and all experts will tell you suicide is contagious when you have a suicide in the family you have to watch the whole family because it's it's contagious when there's a violent crime there's like a radius i can't remember it's like 70 tau, 70 hours something like that there's a rate there's a window of time and a radius in which other violent crimes will now pop up in correlation to one, but these things are contagious, but they're not contagious like, they are contagious like a virus insofar as there is an intelligence to viruses, if you will, if you understand what I'm saying there, right? They, They function and they seek to live in homeostasis with their host, right? And if they can't, they will conquer and destroy that host. That's how a virus works, right? That's how it's designed, right? So in the same way, the, these demons, these intelligences, they, if they can, they will find a host and a, and a community is even better and begin to entrench themselves there. Um, experts, anthropologists, sociologists, now they call it trauma. But the fact of the matter is, is this is how evil is manifesting in the world. And what people are doing, they're mistaking the the physiological aspects of you know extended exposure of cortisol and all those things this is what causes trauma responses blah 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 but yeah but that that's actually it's sorcery right yeah. it's 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 knowing what chemicals do what to get you what you want yeah right the demons know what we're made of and they know they know what they need in order to get access to influence us and then by and then and the, and there and by begin to influence reality around us that's the name of the game father there's this the, you brought up something there about this virus trying to live in homeostasis with the host which obviously what it's trying to do at that point is the host is good because the host is going around transmitting it. So like, right. you're wonderful, right? Like That's you're right. going around, you're spreading it around. So yes, you're great. But then if it can't live in homeostasis, it will just take over the host and just like, so I guess so it could explode itself out or something. There's a mechanism. And I had been thinking about this mechanism and I had been thinking about the way, like I've said many times, I've said in public, I've said it to you. I've probably said it to, to Andrew. Um, I say it all the time that my wife saved my life. Mm. Right. I've said this to people many, many times, like my wife saved my life. The particular this mechanism, though, I think it's so interesting. Like Gavin Newsom supposedly is like that. Now they're announcing that he like had some terrible reaction. He's been out at the governor of California. He's been out of the public from a terrible reaction from getting a booster shot 12 days ago. They're saying he might have Ghislaine Barr syndrome. He might be paralyzed. Like, they don't know, right? And there's a lot of people, like, gloating, like, ah, the same way that they did for Cuomo. And then there's a lot of other people who are like, right, now Cuomo's about to be arrested. He's about to be in jail, this dude. You know what I mean? He's getting arrested for the sexual stuff. These were two people who, 
you know, the people around me are like, no, there's no way Newsom wouldn't have really taken the real the real woke poke like he wouldn't have done all of this stuff. And I'm like, ah, he's a true believer, man. Don't like don't discount the true believer like he believes he's protected like from from his from his God, whether he knows that that they're worshiping a, a, a demon or not. Right. He thinks he's protected. And it was just it's interesting to me because the reason why I say that my, my wife saved my life, like I won't tell the whole story because it's, it's interesting. But what I can say is that like guys who were around me, there seemed to be this when, when I was, you know, in the world that I was in right on this TV show doing all of this. And it's a, I mean, it's a debauched TV show. We were definitely on a grand scale spreading the, the virus of lust, debauchery, like all of these things, right? At a grand global scale. What's interesting is like one of my co-stars right now is sitting in jail, like for murder. Like he killed a woman with his bare hands in the middle of like a ritual type situation, like with his bare hands basically beat her to death, right? They were high on something or whatever. Another guy who was like around me in the early days, he and I were on Dr. Phil together and everything. And then he kind of lost his influence, winds up shot in the head. Other guys have had all of these. And it's almost like the situation where there was a franticness about everybody that I was around, including myself. And I kind of see perhaps what we knew underneath it all. And it was something like, I have to keep being influential. I have to keep being able to spread this thing. If I'm not in the public eye, something terrible is about to happen to me. That it's almost like I've, I've, I'm allowing something to take me over. This is what I'm seeing now with this framework. And I even felt it, that it was like the second that whatever this thing is feels that I'm no longer of use to it, that it no longer has me, something really bad is going to happen to me. And it's sort of like right at that moment when I think that was about to happen in my life, here came my wife into my life, right? Orthodox woman, right? Like, and then my daughter, and then when my daughter was baptized, I feel like I was even more saved and I wasn't even Orthodox yet. Right. <laughs> like, so, right. so right. it's like, but right. this, this father, when you said that I had been thinking about what was this, what was this? And when you said this thing about the virus doing that, mm -hmm. it's just like, I it's, that's real. Mm -hmm. It's real. It's real. And it, it's just funny because, again, you know, what came first? I don't right? know. No, no. Oh, well, the well, demons came first. Well, the demons. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Oh, no, right. for sure. For sure. For sure. Like, like these things, our experience of the virus is a symbol to help us understand something. Oh, I see what you're saying. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like, I see what I'm you're just, saying. I'm just telling you, like, all, like, when you. <clears throat> This is when we when we really imbibe this and really get to understand this, right? <clears throat> this is why only partially getting it, people will drop the ball. Like there's um, I was talking with uh, Sarah with um, not Seraphim, um, although I was talking with Sarah about this earlier, with Nikolai from you know our last guest, right? They were talking about I won't name the name, but he was talking about a certain Orthodox. Uh, doctor, uh, theologian who, you know, was on um, a recent podcast and just going swinging for the fences, you know, just like, you got to be orthodox and this and that. And then right towards the end, after just being like, man, orthodox phronema on that, you know, gospel simplicity, right? That guy, right? Orthodox phronema, this and this and that. And like, right at the end, she's like, and by the way, anyone who's talking about, you know, the, you know, the um, kufid and the, and the jab and, the, you know, if you don't, anyone, don't listen to that. Don't listen to the internet. If you want to know the, the real thing about the vaccine, go to, you know, said puppet diocese website, sure. and, right? Okay. Sure. So the reason why I bring that up is like, how do you get that switch? How do you get that? Like, this is great. This is great. This is great. All of a sudden, what? Right? Here, here's how it happens, right? Because we don't completely stop short, right? Um, we'll talk about worshiping a dead Jew, right? We'll talk about invisible angels. We'll talk about drinking the, the blood of God. We'll talk about all these things. And it's great, right? Because as long as it sounds esoteric and fun 
It's really cool. But the second you start getting into things like we're talking about right now, it's like, actually, no. The reason why we experience viruses the way we do is because they're, they're telling us something about the spiritual world. That's too much. Yeah. Because what you're doing now is you're now starting to cross over the toes of like what well, we know, you know, viruses and germs exist because you just know what I'm saying? Like we have, we have our, our as quote unquote orthodox spiritual people, we have these dichotomies where everything over here is spiritual and it's orthodox, we can talk about it, right? But things like viruses, there's no deeper meaning to viruses. They don't have, there's no real symbol to viruses. That's just kind of like how, do you, do you guys understand what I'm saying? But how could that, how could that mindset be orthodox? Like it, that, that doesn't even. Well, that's my how, point. That's my oh, point yes. That, okay. I got you. Like these people who are like this, this doctor, she, you know, she's like, boom, boom, boom. It's like really good, really good. And then stop short at these things. Right. Because what I'm trying to say is there, there are these dichotomies because there are these sacred cows that cannot be touched, mm -hmm. right? And what I'm, a, what I'm suggesting to people and what I'm a proponent of to all my, you know, all those I'm responsible for is removing these dichotomies, right? Don't just have a quote unquote spiritual orthodox phronema and insight when it comes to just church doctrine right remove the dichotomy and start seeing that they'll see the whole of the world like that right i'll tell you who got it right saint nikolai of azicha saint nikolai veromovich right his book if you want to start if you if those of you let me give you guys a good recommendation out there in podcast land there's a book called um universe of sign and symbols by Saint Nikolai Bedramovich, right? Pick it up. And here's the thing: seventy percent of you are going to pick up this book and be like, "What?" You're going to look at how thin it is, and you're going to read it, and you're going to be like, "What's the big deal?" Right? That's the problem. The seventy percent of you who are going to read it at first and be like, "This is too simple. This is really like kids play. I could read this an hour." You're missing it because the thing is, is you're reading it but that's not, you, you haven't imbibed it, yeah. right? You have to force yourself to begin to think that way. That's the problem, right? When you begin to like, like, oh yeah, I already think this way, then you've won. Like, that's my point is that is reality, right? The, we need to, viruses are there to help us under, like, understand something. Everything is there to help us understand something because the whole purpose of our existence is to bring forth this, work this divine work all of creation is is to be deified right and our job as priests are to is to facilitate and to bring about this work right but if you if you take that only serious if that's only serious to you when you're reading quote unquote maxims the confessor or when you're quote unquote listening to an orthodox podcast or when you're quote unquote in church then you're missing the point it needs to be real when you're looking at your child sick with a virus. It needs to be real when you're looking at your neighborhood and a 45 year old man who should have had his kids in the back seat with him smiling and doing whatever, but instead he's dressed like a 17 year old boy blaring audio porn or pornography, right? Like that's what, like you need to have the eyes to see what's happening here. So this, this isn't normal. So I actually wanted to touch on this. It hasn't really uh, but come up super organically, but it is something that I think is like really interesting is speaking symbolically um, or speaking of symbolism rather. Uh, there seems to be around, and we we're talking about music videos a, a while ago, like 45 mm -hmm. minutes ago or whatever. And I wanted to ask a little bit about like why are why is music and aesthetic so closely intertwined? Because like so I'm wearing certain clothes that identify me as you know a punk rocker or whatever, or I'm wearing certain clothes like this guy, this guy that's dressing like a 17 year old. He's making some kind of there's a statement being made by listening to the audio sonic pornographic assault. Um, it's actually a pretty sweet band name, but uh, if so, then you got this guy doing that, 
he's making a statement by dressing like a 17 year old and then you have the symbolism from this david eugene edwards video that is coming from this music so i guess what i'm trying to ask is like why are those two so closely interlinked because like you can you can make a music video or whatever that seems to be going along with the vibe or whatever and it's and there's a statement of the vibe of the song and there's a statement to be said by like having a really dramatic video with like a silly song playing like even that's kind of its own like weird dissonance between the two so like if you were to have like <clears throat> that sunshine lollipops and whatever song playing during a movie where like a bunch of murders or something were happening then there'd be like a statement saying that so like there's this physical reality to what music does are, are, am I picking up I'm kind of it's a long weekend and I'm kind of sick so I'm not sure I'm feeling like I'm not like putting it together but like there's this like why does this stuff spring up around music so specifically because well, because, because um there are all these uh mythologies around Lucifer right around the enemy like here's 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 an orthodox one um the devil fell out of the devil fell out of heaven and landed in the kleros <laughs> okay i haven't heard that okay yeah yeah um and that's often said about you know the the temptations with choirs and pride and all that stuff um, and why is pride so closely associated to music right why is Right, like this is something you know, <laughs> in the world that's talked about with like, you know, the the pride of you know, well, you know, Lucifer was the worship leader in heaven, like all that, all these, all this kind of like apocryphal mythology around the devil, right? Where does this come from, right? Well, I think the thing with singing, Father, is like I feel like I've heard that in other ancient traditions as well. That it's like you shouldn't, if you're a good singer, you shouldn't sing in public because like pride is gonna like this is definitely gonna be lead you to ruin right right and why is it like um and, and i have a little bit i have a little bit of experience in this and in, in just in the sense of being in that culture but why is it that you don't have this phenomena of the crossroads meeting the devil um you don't have this phenomenon of dying in 27 and, and again, whatever, like, like, let's just say, okay, that's fine. But I would even say there's power behind misleading mythologies too, right? You don't have that same type of mythos with visual arts. Mm. You notice that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, ba would Bastiat might be one that See, I could Basquiat, pull out? No, nah, Bastiat doesn't count because Bastiat, he, He's just kind of like the fallout of, right, right. you know, fame, urban experience, like right. whatever, blah, blah, blah. There isn't this mystical connotation around, hey, how come all these people die at 27? Right. I got what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and yeah. It's like they're slow at the crossroads, right? Because there is, um, and again, I just... Um, Timaeus, when you read Timaeus and you, you begin to understand like music is there and, it, and it, it has a power over the soul, which is profound, right? I mean, even, even the Shema, what's the Shema, right? Like the Shema was the creed for the Jews, right? Hear ye, O Israel, the Lord God is one. Not see ye, Israel, hear ye, O Israel. That teshuva, that call of the Lord, right? This there's something to this aspect of our being. And what it is, is that sound is a much more finer uh, interface than the visual, mm -hmm. right? So these are all gates, right? And this is why when you're chrismated, the, the priest chrismates you and will seal your gates with holy chrism over your eyes, over your nostrils, over your mouth, over your ears, right? It's mm. sealing the gates. This is this is where influence 
begins. This is why the whole beginning of the baptism, even for babies, is an exorcism, right? Because the church, in her wisdom, is knows how reality works, right? And so, um, getting back to to Saint Nikolai, you know, um, just to kind of like, I want to expound just a little bit on that because I don't want people to miss what I'm saying right here about sound being a finer interface, right? A finer interface than the, than the visual, right? So uh, I'm gonna butcher it, but I'll, I'll try. So, um, and forgive me if it's not a hard, fast quote, but um, water is finer than earth. Fire is finer than water. Air is finer than fire, right? Lightning is finer than air. Right, and the spirit is finer than lightning. If you understand that context of what's being said there, right, this is what this is what we mean. There, the eyes deal with a heavier, gross matter, right. The ears, right, deal with a fine. It's a finer interface, right, and it's able to get to the soul in a in a in a way that's much more deeper, resonant, impactful. It's more akin to the soul than just what the visual aspect feeds. So this is a big part of why music, when you couple that with the visual, right? Now you're cooking with gas, as they would say. Is that and that's like a harmony. That's like a multi-sensory yeah. harmony. Because like he was talking about, if there's a scene of a murder taking place, and then they have like some sweet song playing the dissonance itself you respond to the dissonance of that right that it becomes itself as a statement yeah the music becomes apparent yeah. whereas if it was something that was harmonious you might not even notice the music it would just like we don't often outright unless we're paying attention to it we don't outright notice the soundtrack of a movie most times if the soundtrack is really good unless it just feels like Unless it's Dune, right? Unless it's Dune. If the soundtrack, but even in that case, like if you're just watching it and you don't know, okay, this is an amazing Hans Zimmer soundtrack going in, so let me pay attention. It just m enhances the visual, right? Or, or it enhances the overall experience. You know, but it's all. That's how I write my D&D campaigns. You listen so, to music in the background? Oh, dude, I have a whole soundtrack element to my D&D &D campaigns that like. Well, well I will tell you, um, when I, when I was doing my mixtapes and I was in the particular profession that I was, best believe that that was the, that was the background of, uh, of some of when I was at work. Let's just put it like that. And it's like done very much on purpose. Hey, I'll even top all of you. Go. Um, for those people who were, you know, longtime clients of mine, I've had people tell me over and over again, sometimes it wasn't even about that tattoo, but it was about the experience. Because people would be like, the music that you play it just matches the tattoo, the experience like perfectly. It, it brought them into this place, right? And, and you know, I would play consistently. If you have a four session tattoo, the, the, the soundtrack was the same, right? And so this is, I mean, those are three examples of what we're talking about, right? So this, this is its own type of magic, if you will, right? And even when you start getting into the, the reality of, if I invoke a certain dissonance, I, if I know what I'm doing, I'll invoke that dissonance purposefully to bring about a shock because that shock now breaks down certain factors and now a person is susceptible to suggestion in a very particular way than they would be from a seductive type of situation, right? Each one brings about, depending on what kind of result you want, what kind of, you know, what kind of dominance you want, you will therefore begin to practice or implement, you know. Um, can, I, can I, um, I just want to take a step back just really quick because you were talking about uh, the fullness of the orthodox phronema uh, and how people, how some people just want to, when they're, when they are talking about their orthodoxy, they want to talk about the phronema. Uh, 
but when it comes to viruses, they uh, don't. And I kind of wanted uh, to ask you if you can kind of make a link between, you know, like when Christ would heal, like when he healed the infirm man, he would say, your sin is forgiven you. He wouldn't just say, you're healed now. And he would say, your sin is forgiven you. And he said, now go and sin no more unless something worse happened to you. Mm -hmm. So what is, what, is, what is the link between infirmities or viruses and, and maybe sin, yeah. even if it's generational or? Yeah, um, it's, it's just easier to understand that the, the dichotomies that are there, like we asked, we asked what the link is because we've inserted dichotomies that shouldn't be there. That's, that's the whole problem, right? And now, even now people, like people have this level where they're like, and we've been talking about this here in this podcast in particular, it's just like, you know, the sophistos, you know, they wanna have an orthodoxy that allows them to look sophisticated in the world's eyes. They wanna have an orthodoxy that allows them to find the accolades of the academics and all this stuff, right? Um, and they'll and they'll they'll use terms to, you know, keep orthodoxy looking exotic, and keep you know orthodoxy looking um, sophisticated. But the second that you start going into these areas of like, yeah, illness is connected to sin. They go well, well, the father's actually kind of mean this. And they actually kind of mean that, right? And it's like... It like makes them uncomfortable or something? Yeah, because they don't want to look unsophisticated. And, and again, these are, these are the, this is the dichotomy, right? It's like, oh, it's fine to talk about a sacramental worldview being in the world as long as it, as long as it sounds um, kind of new agey or kind of like in, in, in line with how the world would see things now. But if it gets into that realm where it feels... It feels like it's stepping on the toes of rationalism and science and all that stuff. It's like, whoa, 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 whoa. No, viruses are just viruses. There's no need to over-spiritualize it. And it's like, okay. You know, these dichotomies, these, um, these walls that we insert are the problem. So um, the, patristic, the patristic consensus, right? Um, will tell you that there's a connection to sin and illness. I mean, that, that, that's just, that's, there's no need to, that's not up for some big debate. It's just, it, it is, right? And what would be like an example of that, Father, just off the cuff? Like, there's like a causal relationship between the two. Like, can you think of one? I mean, obviously you have the your teeth are rotting because you eat too much sugar or sure. I mean that's that's good right there your teeth are rotting because you eat too much sugar or um and so your gluttony right mm -hmm. is causing actual physical decay right or you know one I like to use is like generational sin right and the way that generational sin begins to what I use, I use the term calcify and begin to, to begin to manifest physiologically in people, right? So, you know, great grandpa was in, you know, uh, you know, World War II or whatever, you know, shell shock came home, started beating his wife, right? Great, great grandma was a devout woman of faith and tried to tell her son, you need to, you know, pray and you need to seek the Lord and you need to talk to father so-and-so and really tell him about what happened. You know, grandpa didn't want to do it. And so he never dealt with what he did in, over there in Germany. And that just eats him up. And so he takes that out on grandma or whatever beats her. Dad learns that. You see what I'm saying? Now you have this yeah. generational component. And then down the line, it's like, people now have a genetic disposition to certain things, right? But that root of it started spiritually with the refusal to do what he knew what, was, what he should have done, right? It's not always about, I did this. A lot of times it's about, I know I should do this, but I don't. That's, <laughs> that is often the sin yeah. that really sinks your boat. Yeah, 100%. Right? 
Like even right now, like, you know, just being really frank as a shepherd, I'm thankful for it because I love my flock and everyone's doing, you know, well, we're, thank God. But if someone was to ask me like, what's my big thing I want everyone to work on is like, that's, that's the thing my flock on the whole needs to work on. Is not so much, it, it's, it's not doing the thing that you know you should do. Like, that's the thing, right? Because you're gonna sin. Sin is disease, right? The diabetic is, is, has to deal with their diabetes. It's almost like the problem isn't that you have diabetes. The problem is that you aren't maintaining your diabetes. Does that make sense? Like, mm. it's not your fault, let's say. Let's say you're not diabetic because from, from overeating. Let's say you're diabetic because of hereditary factors, right? It's not your fault, but it's your responsibility. Yeah. Right? And so this is, this is the thing that, that connection between sin and illness, right? It's like, if you don't watch your sin and you don't, you know, if you don't live the, 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 the sacramental liturgical life of repentance as an Orthodox Christian, then, you know, this thing that happens, that's not God's judgment. That's you. <laughs> this thing of it's not, it's not your fault, but it's your responsibility mm -hmm. is to me, that seems to be the, the people that I, that I meet who, who I would say are, yeah, who I would say are, are on the right path. Mm -hmm. That is the thing. Like if, if, if you had to articulate what separates them from, let's say the opposite end of a spectrum, which is an ultra woke, mm -hmm. that's <laughs> it. Because it yeah. seems to me, it seems to me that if you had to define the, the, the woke ethos in the <laughs> tiniest set of words possible, it would be, it's not my fault. So it's not my responsibility. Yeah. <clears throat> That basically is the woke ethos. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. It, I think, I think uh, since you brought up the woke ethos, it's like, you know, uh, it's, it's just like people falling in and, and I, I mean, I'll call them victims, but really I don't think that they're victims, but right. they, they fall into the algorithm. Right. Yeah. And sometimes they see it, but they realize the pushback is, I'm gonna, it's going to take some sacrifice. People aren't going to like me. I'm going to have to be held to scrutiny. And they're afraid, you know? Yeah. By the well, way, that, that, that goes to doing the thing that you, to not doing the thing that you know you need to do. I, I like, I, it's weird because in some ways, the people, so there, there are people in my life who have gone full woke for sure. And in some ways, I have like a, a sense of like, you know, forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do for some of them. Right. That yeah. it's just like they're enmeshed in the soup and all of that. But I do think, Seraphim, like the people who I have around me who will even talk to me about it, like, yeah, man, I know. <laughs> like, you know, I'm not really in for that. But like, come on, man, you know, like around Every, this person and this person and this member of my family and this person I work with and you know this friend of ours and everything and it's like why yeah. I'm just not gonna say anything man I'm just or I'm just gonna still and I'm like but you're still yeah but it, but when you're with them you go along with the thing man yeah it, it kind of remind me of uh Operation Mockingbird right right when the when the CIA was controlling journalists you know for their own private uh propaganda or whatever it was you know my question for people who's always on this woke stuff is like you know were you this sensitive about it before it became this media this big media thing like how were you what what were you like before this why is it is i'm always they don't remember yeah, yeah. <laughs> they don't yeah what what before this there was a before <laughs> this before 2020 is it was something was before march 2020 i don't even remember yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I think uh by the way, uh there's a couple of us obviously that all hang out and we're all spiritual sons and daughters of Father Turbo, and it's almost like a uh it's like um oh, I don't remember what the word is, I'm tired. Uh the uh it's like a call and response, but I'll be like, it's not your fault, and the other person will be like, but it's your responsibility. And like, at, because we all work with Father Turbo, so we all get told it all the time. 
It's not your fault. It's your responsibility. So, um, true. I mean, it's absolutely <laughs> true. And I use it at my work. I use it at my work all the time. I'm like, look, man, it's not your fault. You're an alcoholic, but what are you going to do? You're just going to keep drinking. Is that what you want to do? Because you're talking to me about how miserable you are. So why don't we, why don't we try something about it? It's not fair. Life's not fair. Or yeah. because I mean, if it were fair, probably a lot worse things would be happening to all of us. But yeah. you know, that's it, it's it's this idea, you know. I, I even look at people who chase like, you know, the whole enlightenment idea and transcendence. <laughs> they want they're looking for this for this magic pill of happiness, you know, and this and that's 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 one thing that holds true for orthodoxy that we don't lie. That your that your joy and happiness is going to come through sacrifice, yeah. through some type of some type of giving up of something that you feel like you should have. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Well, that's the that's where meaning comes from. Right. If there's if there's no sacrifice, how could it be? How could it be meaningful? Yeah. There's that I, over and over I've seen, and I've even seen this myself in things that I do. Sometimes people will encounter me and they'll be like well you're doing this and this and this well why aren't you giving some of this away for free or like you know what are you doing and 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 i'm like what i've seen over and over and it's happened to me in my own life that it's almost like if you haven't had to to pay for a thing whether that's wisdom whether that's some level of instruction even if the payment is in some form of sacrifice that it's like wake up early in the morning you know, yeah. you got to wait, you got to wake up in the, in the dead of night still, and you got to go someplace. And it's like, well, we're going to go train. So it's like, if everything was made easy for you, and I've seen it also in people who have the ability to make things easy for themselves, I never see any improvement. I never see anything catch. You know what I mean? That it's like, yeah, yeah. you paid all this money for the most expensive personal trainer to have yeah. them show up to your house and all of this stuff. And they're walking you through at your schedule and yeah. on your time and when it's convenient for you. And it's like no improvement yeah. and no and, improvement. And the, in the, in the guy that's, that's walking to the corner park doing pull-ups on the monkey bars is way more jacked than you are. In, in <laughs> insanely, insanely jacked. Yeah. Like this is the most jacked person in the world that you've ever seen. And you're like, this dude, I didn't even, you have muscles in places that I didn't see, even have muscles. And you're like, where, what gym do you go to? And he just shows you just, it's just a, a monkey. Bar. It's just like the one monkey bar, just the one that's made out of pipes. That's just made out of pipes and just like cemented into the ground. And he's like, that's it right there. Yeah. What? <laughs> what? Yeah. Uh, well, gentlemen, I think that's about two hours. I think we're getting on there. Um, so I take a second, take a second, but uh, I think I'll start with music just because that was kind of the theme of the episode. But what is without a doubt. Even talk about Marilyn Manson and uh, and Kanye and Justin Kanye. Bieber. <laughs> can we we're, we're not actually at two hours. I think maybe it, we're can we not? do this not yet we've got okay, about no, no, i think sure. 15 I, minutes i knocked it at nine o'clock my fault can we can can we i was hoping that we would get to that i don't yeah. even know what i don't even know what to think about that whole thing to be honest i don't know what you guys are talking about so Mar you know marilyn manson when kanye did it was very scandalous when kanye did his last little live listening session for this donda album uh he he like walked out and it was like the baby and Marilyn Manson. And so the baby had just been in this like big thing where he, you know, he all this controversy because he's doing some anti woke stuff. And then Marilyn Manson, because obviously he's like in all this hot water. I don't know whether it's criminal or civil or whatever for like, I don't know whether it's sexual harassment or whether he was it's 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 deeper than that. It's like sexual abuse, some some yeah. sort of thing that he was involved in. And so everybody was like, what's he doing? What's he doing? And then just recently, there's a video of. It's obviously the Sunday service. Everybody's wearing white. Justin Bieber's doing saying a prayer and Marilyn Manson standing there. Now, weirdly, Marilyn Manson's in some kind of weird like hood situation with like his it like storm shadow. I don't like storm shadow from yeah. GI yeah. Joe. Exactly. Yeah. But I don't e I didn't even know what to I don't even know what to think about this whole situation. But again, it does tie into this because, like I said, Travis Scott was another person who was around during that whole thing with the Donda album. He's on the album, you know, so 
I don't know, Father, what I'm interested to hear your thoughts on that whole thing. Yeah, I'm actually um I'm reserving I'm reserving a little bit of judgment on it because um on the one hand this um I don't trust it. What, like his repent, his repent. That was my feeling too. I don't, there was I don't, something I don't, about it. Yeah, I don't trust it. Um, I, I don't trust it. Um, but I also know that, like, you know, I know where the Holy Spirit is, you know, and I know, I know what to hold to, but. You know, I've, I've also been telling people, and I guess this is kind of me going on record since it's here, like literally, but, you know, I think we're about to enter an age of miracle. Yeah. And, um, and I think it's a time for Orthodox Christians to be really, really vigilant right now because it's going to get even more confusing and I think we will start seeing miracles like openly in the next few years. I think that we're about to start seeing some stuff that um, even those who are the most discerning are really going to start kind of like, well, you know, this and that. But and, what's uh, confusing? So what's you're saying they won't all be from the Holy Spirit? These miracles won't all be from the Holy Spirit? That's exactly or they what I'm saying. Uh -huh. He said that uh, some some didn't didn't we cast out demons in your name? Right. Right. That's <laughs> but right. what is confusing about that situation? I I think I'm still a step behind. Like, what's confused? Like, why would that? Is, I'll give you an example. Like when you actually hear it, it's like there's certain things. If you started thinking about it, it's just like man, you know, like Justin Bieber's prayer. Right? He's just like we come against all. We come against the enemy. There's these key phrases that are used, which if you're not really discerning, seem like, okay, this isn't just kind of like, you know, Kenneth Copeland, you know, this isn't like when Trump was like, yeah, God bless America. And I love, you know, Corinthians one or whatever, right? <laughs> it's like, it's deep. It, it gets the sense that there's deeper than that, right? Um, but the problem with it is, is again, it's like there is, um, there's something speaking to our audience here, right? Us in the States, us that are, you know, largely converts, whatever, or, or us who are like at least exploring orthodoxy, right? There's a reality of like God wooing us and drawing us even before we're baptized and chrismated, right? So that's a real thing. That's why I have to reserve some judgment and be like, let's see, right? Because if I say like, nope, nope, it's all false. It's all this and that. It's just like, people are still saying that about me, right? I'm sure there's somebody out there who's still like, they're just waiting for me to do something terrible so they can be like, see, I knew he was fake. I knew it the whole time, right? You, do you guys see what I'm saying on that? Like, so if I could never mind being a priest if i can actually be in the church right then anything's possible right because i i should not be in the church let alone be a priest so anything's possible that's what i mean by i'm, I'm i have to reserve some judgment but this is my big thing just as a priest right just to put that hat, that hat, like i wear that hat i don't i don't ever take it off right it's just it is what i am right but like Now's not the time. I, I'm, I'm not going to. Now's not the time to get my 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 people with their guards down. I, you know what I mean. Now's not the time to be like, oh well, whatever. And and the, and some people are doing that. Some people are like, well, this was all just kind of like a blip on this on the radar. It doesn't matter. It's like no, 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 don't. We were, talk, we were talking about that th tonight at dinner too. Like we're coming into a time now as the mandates go away and as things kind of go whatever. The What people did in the last, you know, two years 
unless they're explicitly repenting of it, right? And, and what I mean by repenting, I mean like, this was wrong. I see what I did was wrong. Not just like, well, whatever. Unless you're actually repenting of it, the reason why you did it is still alive in you. Yes. And stronger because you got away with it spiritually. You got away, you got away with it, right? Mm. So, so the thing is, is as, as mandates go down and everything is even seeming more and more like going back to normal, actually, I want my people to not, go, the, the, the wise virgins, don't fall asleep. Now's not the time to think, oh, it's, it was a crazy time, but it's all good, right? I'm never looking for the chaos. I'm looking for when they say, peace, peace, mm -hmm. peace and safety, then comes sudden destruction. That's what I'm looking for, right? Yeah. I'm, I'm worried when things start feeling good and like, okay, you know, we got through this. And so I'm like, no, 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 no. Like, so when I see these things and I see people adopting spiritual and religious affect but there doesn't seem to be a measure of salt of repentance i'm 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 beyond suspicious right i don't know their hearts i don't know what they're doing they could be having meetings in their mansions and just confessing their sins to each other and doing all kinds of stuff they could be i don't know but from my perspective, if I earned fame and wealth from promoting darkness and I've turned to the light, then I will understand that I must now repent and, and balance the scales. So if I'm not seeing that on a public scale, the way that I saw you bringing in the darkness, something's wrong. It's not enough for you to stand and, and to say some words, right? Because like Seraphim said from that, from the book of John, you know, many in that day would say, Lord, Lord, do we not cast out demons in your name? And I would remind everyone, Simon Magus, I mean, he was all about, ooh, what is this power of the Holy Spirit? How, how much can I purchase this power for? So I'm, I'm, I'm waiting to see. God knows. I, I sincerely hope that it's authentic. I sincerely hope that they are on a path of repentance and moving towards Christ. But for the sake of, you know, me and my house and my flock, I tell everyone, don't trust it yet. Thank you. Well, if we don't hear from them for a long time, maybe that's actual repentance. Like if they fall out of the spotlight for a while. Could be. Well, but like, like I, like I said, like I said, for them, if they if they they've they've got that thing, man, if they fall out of if they fall out of the spotlight, that might be their death. They know it. Oh dang! Yeah, they've got the thing. They've got the thing. I'm glad you. I, it's I'm it's. I'm glad virus. you articulated that, Father, because I've been wondering about it for a long time, man. It's the virus. It's the virus. Yeah. The real virus. The real yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah. Well, now we're at two hours, Andrew. We're at two hours. Oh uh i was thinking about that i went to a prison today do you know there's a prison in the west bottom <laughs> oh, so in the west bottom no yeah 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 i went there today because they're gonna like build it up again or whatever yeah and uh there's a guy in there and he was just like a mason and mm. i was like oh even here he's like gotta get in here too i mean i'm sorry like i was just thinking about that because we were talking about a long time ago, I had a conversation with someone who was not doing well because, all right, so I, I guess I'll be the guy that maybe will get some backlash and that's okay. I, so far, it hasn't happened. So, but like um, we had talked about uh, that there's this guy he knew that who's struggling with a sobriety. And I've actually met a couple of Masons and the very first one I ever met was extremely wasted on pain pills. Like, and he was like my medical assistant at a doctor's office. Hmm. Um, he was like taking my blood pressure and stuff like that. And he was like falling off his chair, Whoa. like, like straight up was like nodding. And like, I was like, to the point where I'm a pretty, I'm a, I'm from the Midwest. Like, I'm not very like confrontational. I was like, are you okay, dude? 
and he had what looked like religious like tattoos mm-hmm. like it would look mm-hmm. like a battle of some sort it's like oh maybe he's catholic he's mm-hmm. like no it's it's messianic you know whatever mm-hmm. and so we were talking about like this like you have this thing right so like your celebrity you know um and this guy was really struggling with sobriety and he kind of broke down eventually he was like i just feels like it's something that i got from the temple it like that i got from like the mason temple it feels like it was just like you either ride it like a horse like you get like the bucking horse and you ride it and it takes you places or it just tramples you and it just feels like it's trampling me all the time and he just couldn't shake it and i've known people who have like i was just talking about this today with someone who was talking about sexual predators uh like legitimate sexual predators like 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 carnivores um and um you know uh not to use the explicit but they said it's a mind f you know the the f word and that made me that and i just launched into this whole like inspiration inspired thing where i was talking with them i was like yeah but the thing about why like you see such low like um effectiveness of like sexual predator reform groups is because they deal entirely with the physical there is no spiritual aspect to it and like I was like started talking about like paganism and the sexual rights that go into it and i was like where is this stuff coming from and i was like i was like the inner like the corrupted relationship that sex with sex and especially with children all of it comes together from paganism and i was like and they're not addressing that at all they're treating this as though just like any other toxic compulsion that you just gotta gotta keep it down you know gotta keep it under wraps like and i don't know like it was like a whole revelation to me a little bit about like when you said that thing Cyprian about you either you know eat the bar the bar eats you a little bit like it kind of clicked with me a little bit I was like where have I heard that before and it made me think of that guy and then that brings into the whole spiritual matter the side the virus I don't know it was a long weekend and I'm kind of tired so I'm processing stuff a little bit out loud but (laughs) that's that but I think it's good. Anyway, anyway. All right. Um, take a second. Oh, yeah. Okay, that's what it was. Take a second and think about this. Okay. And we'll do music. Maybe we'll do a movie next week or something like that. Okay. What is, without a doubt, your guys' guilty pleasure? In terms of music? Life? Yeah. What's something that you don't necessarily lead? I lead with it now. But at certain times in my life, I wouldn't have led with my guilty pleasure. I know exactly what they are. And I kind of like wear them on my sleeve a little bit. But people have heard me talk about. Guilty pleasure in terms of music. So is this supposed to be something that we would like not necessarily admit that we listen to perhaps? Or it's probably like a part of you. It's like sometimes you just want like a ham and cheese sandwich, you know, like nothing complicated. (laughs) Like you just want like like a Budweiser and a hot dog. So mine is, I'm going, oh. go ahead. What's your, what's yours? Go ahead. I have a weakness for late eighties and mid nineties, like female driven arena rock. Like okay. Celine Dion and Cher. But my biggest probably is always going to be, cause I just always get a lot of crap is smash mouth, man. Smash mouth. Is you've, fun. you've brought up smash mouth a few times. It seems have, like they've you, got it. They've got, will, got a whole to. on you. It, it will continue to Astro lounge is not a bad album. It's not like something <laughs> that, like I want to like, this is who I am as a person and like pop on like all star walking on the sun. But it's like, I mean, it's like that. What's that? Um, Iris by Goo Goo Dolls. Is mm-hmm. that the song, you know, cause I don't, it's like mm-hmm. oh that's that's yeah i could yeah yeah i could do that pleasure right yeah yeah i, I, I yeah because i think any like, any like pop on like any kind of like easy listening station that's gonna be that uh yeah i, I will i will definitely do that on I my own for a sure war. i fought a war a decade and a half long war with music like that where every bit of my being was like, I cannot listen to stuff like that because it's not challenging and it's not, it it does nothing good for me. It's But you know all the lyrics, don't you? Yes. But so (laughs) (laughs) around two years ago, I gave up. 
I gave up the war and I was like, yeah. you know what? And I'm going to start listening to people my entire life. I've rejected. Like I finally mm-hmm. gave Led Zeppelin a shot because like I was born, I was raised with punk rockers. They're like, you don't like mm-hmm. Led Zeppelin. I'm like, I don't like Led Zeppelin. So now I'm like, okay, I'll give him a shot. So that's what I'm saying is two years. Oh, ago, Led Zeppelin. Yeah. That's a, is that supposed to be a guilty? Ple- like, no, is that a guilty pleasure movie. or is it just a pleasure? Like that's for me, it's just a pleasure. I'll as leave with that. Rocker, that's you fine. Can't like classic music. You can't like classic rock. If you're a punk rocker, you're just like, no, oh, man. Dead. So that's what I'm saying about two years ago. I was like, no, I'm just going to start listening to music. And if I like it, I like it. If I don't, I don't within. Reason. Oh, bro. Uh, okay. If we're going to go there, like, Phil Collins, uh, Hall and Oates. Yeah, I you know what I mean? Like, come on, man. Elton John. I'm Elton in. Elton John is sweet. Elton John I'm is in. I'm in, man. What are you talking about? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm but like, what's maybe something that, like, when you pull up to an intersection, you maybe turn down a little All bit? All of those. Yeah. Okay. Uh, everything uh, I just, yeah. everything uh, I just. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to look at, I'm just going to say mine, you know, is, is, you know, is Kendrick Lamar, right? Just is that personally. a guilty pleasure? I, I just I think well, that's a pleasure. I love it, Kendrick it, Lamar. It depends on what it depends on what you're okay. listening to. You know, it's like sometimes I gotta okay. be like, okay, I ain't gonna listen to this song of his, but I'll okay. listen to this song. This one is this one is pretty good, you know. Or I'm not gonna listen to this one. I'm just gonna make my playlist with the songs that I feel like is okay to listen to. Because I, I, I mean, I'm going to be honest, like, you know, there are some stuff that, I, that I'll hear. I'm like, OK, well, that's not right. You know, him. Yeah. And, and one thing is like, you know, if I'm out somewhere, I found myself, I'll be humming the weekend. Right. Oh, but see the week. <laughs> the, well, this. So so here's the thing. Like, I actually haven't since I since becoming Orthodox, I actually haven't listened to the weekend. But no, I will tell you that there was a there was a period in my life when that was the soundtrack to my entire life. Like his first his first two albums and the girl who was my girlfriend at the time, I think like House of Balloons, I've probably heard Man, that that's... album straight through 10,000 times. No, yeah. I'm not even kidding. And, I'm and, not even kidding. And and you and you uh that the uh, music comes with the uh, ambiance, right? Mm-hmm. it shapes yeah. your life it, it, and and you know what i would say weirdly enough since we're talking about music and that's really interesting i can almost pinpoint a the specific trajectory of the time in my life that i'm talking about where i was actively pointed at the adversary i can i i would say that i could actually say hearing that album for the first time I can put a pin in it. I could put the date in it. And I could say that everything that happened on that trajectory came from came from that. I could almost say it came from that day. Weirdly enough. Now that now that you would say that weirdly enough, I could say that from that first weekend album, which, by the way, he gave away for free. Yeah. Yeah. He made a big He didn't sell that. Yeah. So, and there was no fanfare. Huh. No, nothing. A buddy of mine who was like a real music guy who I worked with, I was working at a music company at the time. And he was like, you have to, you have to get, th-. it was that and Frank Ocean's album, first album came out at the same time. And he was like, these two albums, you have to get them. You don't understand. There's something completely different going on here. Yeah. He's like this weekend album. He's like, it's like nothing you've ever heard. There's something so special about it. And the yeah. website where you could download it was just black. Yeah. And it had the black and white pictures of just the legs and the balloons. And then it was just a link, like an old school HTML. Yeah. Ooh, it's, I'm kind of getting a little bit of like a weird feeling about it now. Yeah. Now that I think about the how whole do you, thing. Yeah, how do you, if you, if you hear a Frank Ocean now, like it's, it's, can't do it. You, you hear it different now, right? Mm-hmm. It's like, I can't hey, do it. Like, I how can't did do I it. listen to this? Yeah. <laughs> and at the end, at the time I was like, oh, this is the greatest this is this is the, the most artistic, most wonderful thing that's ever been done. Like, oh, yeah. wow. And sharing it again, like a virus. I was like, you got to hear this. You got to hear this. You got it's very weird. Yeah. Mm. Hey, Andrew WK. That's what I did with Andrew WK when I found him. Turns out that dude is. Oh, he's another one. Deeply, deeply into some stuff that I cannot get on board with, it's especially now. He's not even lying about it anymore. He's straight up like. Mm. 
singing songs to demons like praising their praising their yeah what do you guys just i got just a real quick chime on uh i mean i'm not a, i've never been a fan but i've just seen some things uh, of tyler the creator tyler the creator yep yep yeah. yep and the whole uh wolf gang and all that yeah yeah, yeah 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 odd future yeah yeah, yeah. He's he's very perform he's very performative, but Frank Ocean came from out of that group. Oh really? Yeah, yeah. He's he's one of that group. That's a. Father, mm. I'm, I'm kind of dying to know what yours are. Huh? Oh, Father Turbo. Yeah, his guilty yeah. pleasures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know you got us now. Now, man, I'm gonna. Oh, that's so weird. Now I'm a little freaked out. Go. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, I need to not think about this. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna see without looking on this one. Go ahead, Father. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, for me it's an easy one. It's it's Stone Temple Pilots. Oh man, that perfect. That's the perfect answer. <laughs> I mean, they're good, but it's not like anything I would be like super happy. I love, but that's a really good answer. Actually, mm -hmm. number four is a pretty good album. That's the name of the album, right? Number four, the one with just the star on it. You know how much of a guilty pleasure it is for me? I don't even know albums. I just know from the radio. And, really? like the, and, and the Crow movie. That's mm -hmm. how much of a, you know what I mean? It's like. Uh, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, then I got one more. Actually, if it's just from radio, and then I'll be done. It's Piano Rock. I don't Anything know. Anything with the piano, yeah. yeah. The Ray, Coldplay, both those bands. Like, every time I hear Coldplay, I'm just like. Oh, Coldplay. Because Coldplay <laughs> became. How is that Coldplay? Every evangelical Protestant song, worship song from the last 20 years sounds like Coldplay. Been a Coldplay song. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. It's not because, like because it's evocative. Exactly what we were talking about, right? That it's it has a spirit. Coldplay has this spiritual feeling to yeah. you, you feel like Forgive me. I just I just want to say this too, because you know, St. Augustine, this is this is one of the, his things about music and church mm. music. St. Augustine's very hardline and explicit about like the problem because he's like, yeah, basically, I'm sitting here trying to worship God, and these emotions wash over me because of the music. And he's basically saying it's improper. Yeah, it's improper. That's Which is like, the reason why we like. I mean, there's the parishes that have the organs. God help them, but like we don't we don't do the music. We don't do the instruments. You know, for that very reason. So it's what Nikolai was talking about last week. It was all yeah, like on the sentimentality and the motion. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. yeah. Well, perfectly. Then it perfectly flowed. Thank yeah. you guys. Do you have anything? Um, this is outro for us. Today? Interestingly enough. No, I don't really. <laughs> I, I, uh, I got nothing for an outro and that alone in and of itself, symbolically speaking, is the outro is the absence of something has now become something. So <laughs> think about it. Think about it. Uh, we still have the, um, the land, uh, huh, landing page, landing page, Royal path dot network. Uh, we love your guys' comments. Thank you very much, Seraphim, for being on. Uh, yes, really thank you. It was an honor. It was an honor. Yeah. That was really cool. Um, that was delightful, actually. Um, but anyway, um, that's it. Good night. Goodbye. <laughs>